Mm. I'm sorry, y'all. I had to drink my smoothie. It's so good. Anyway, in most buildings, she said, the air exchange rate is usually much lower, allowing virus to accumulate in the air and pose a greater risk. The WHO also is relying on dated definition of airborne transmission, Dr. Mars said. The agency believes in airborne pathology or pathogen like the measles virus has to be highly infectious and to travel long distances. People generally think and talk about airborne transmission profoundly stupidly, said Bill Hannes, an epidemiologist at the Harvard T. H. Chan School of Public Health. We have this notion that airborne transmission means that droplets hanging in the air is capable of infecting you for many, many hours, drifting down streets through letter boxes and finding their way into homes everywhere. Experts all agree that the coronavirus does not behave that way. Dr. Mar said others, um, Dr. Mar and others said the coronavirus seemed to be most infectious when people were in prolonged contact at close range, especially indoors, and even more so in super spreader events, exactly what scientists would expect from aerosol transmission. And y'all know aerosol transmission um, means, y'all don't remember, a lot of y'all don't remember the days of the aerosol spray, because uh, y'all, a lot of y'all is blunt babies. I understand. But aerosol is when we, you know, we used to get, everything used to be aerosol. It's like deodorant and shit like that. It's like when you spray it, it's like, shh. It's not more like a mist, like the things a lot of people use today. It's more like everything is more like hairspray. Um, that's what aerosol uh, means. So the transmission, aerosol transmission, you can kind of visualize that. Anyway, the World Health, or the World Health Health Organization has found itself at odds with groups of scientists more than once during this pandemic. The agency lagging behind the most of its members, nations, in endorsing face coverings for the public. While the other organizations, including the CDC, have long since acknowledged that the importance of transmission by people without symptoms, the WHO still maintains that a symptomatic transmission is rare. At country level, a lot of WHO technical staff are scratching their heads, said a consultant at a regional office in Southeast Asia who did not wish to be identified because he was worried about losing his contract. This is not giving us credibility. The consultant recalled that the WHO staff members in his country were the only ones to go without masks after the government there endorsed them. Many experts said that the WHO should embrace what some called a precautionary principle and that others call needs and values. The idea is that even without definitive evidence, the agency agencies should assume the worst of the virus. Apply common sense and recommend the best protection for the people. There is no incontrovertible proof. There is no incontrovertible proof that SARS CoV 2 traveled or is transmitted significantly by aerosols, but there is absolutely no evidence that it is not, said Dr. Trish Greenlaw. So, at the moment, we have to make a decision in the face of uncertainty. And my goodness, it's going to be a disastrous decision if we get it wrong. So why not just wear a mask for just a few weeks, just in case? After all, the WHO seems willing to accept, without much evidence, the idea that the virus may be transmitted from surfaces. She and other researchers noted that even as other health agencies have stepped back from emphasizing that route. I agree 
that fault my transmission is not directly demonstrated for this virus, Dr. Andrew Grelly said. The WHO technical lead on infection control, referring to objects that may be infectious. But it is well known that the other coronaviruses and respiratory viruses are transmitted and demonstrated to be transmitted by contact with fomite. The agency must also consider the needs of all its members and nations, including those with limited resources, and make up its recommendation, recommendations that are tempered by availability, feasibility, compliance, resource implications, among other things she said. Hmm. Aerosols may play some limited role in spreading the virus, said Dr. Paul Hunter, a member of the Infection Prevention Committee. Uh, but if the WHO were to push for rigorous control measures in the absence of proof, hospitals in low- and middle-income countries may be forced to divert scarce resources from other crucial programs. That's the balance that an organization like the WHO has to achieve, he said. It's the easiest thing in the world for, to say, we've got to follow the precautionary principle and ignore the opportunity cost of that. In interviews, other scientists criticized this view as paternalistic. We're not going to say what we really think because we think you can't deal with it, right? Well, I don't think that's right, said Don Milton, an aerosol expert. Even cloth masks, if worn by every everyone, can significantly reduce transmission. And the who should say so clearly, he stated. Several experts criticized the who messaging uh, throughout the pandemic, saying that the staff seems to prize scientific perspective over clarity. What you say is designed to help people understand that the nature of the public health problem, uh, is, and that's the difference that just scientifically describing the disease or a virus. The WHO tends to describe the absence of evidence as evidence of absence. <laughs> In April, for example, there is... Current, the WHO said, but there is currently no evidence that people who have recovered from COVID-19 have the antibodies that are protecting them from a second infection, although that's what they stated. The statement was intended to indicate uncertainty, but by phrases stoked unease among the public and earned rebukes from several experts and journalists who later walked back those comments. However, they had already said them. In a less public instance, the WHO said there was no evidence to suggest that people with HIV were at increased risk from the, at risk from the coronavirus. After Joseph Amon, the director of the Global Health Drexel University in Philadelphia, sat on an agency who pointed out, said that the risk of that is unknown. <coughs> Excuse me, y'all. <coughs> Certainly unknown. <clears throat> but of course whose staff and some members of the critics did not give its committee enough credit those that may have been frustrated may not be cognitive of who expert and the committee's work and they work slowly and deliberately Dr. McClaw said Another doctor, Dr. Suman, says agency staff members were trying to evaluate new scientific evidence as fast as possible, but without sacrificing the quality of their review. She also added that the agency will try to broaden the committee's expertise and communications to make sure everyone is heard. We will take it more seriously and we do take it seriously when journalists and scientists or anyone challenges us and say we can do better than this she said 
we signif we definitely significantly want to do better. Well, let's just see. Let's just see if it's lip service or if it's the truth. All right. See you in the next video.